Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, this is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. I am Kayleen, I'm your host, and welcome to any new viewers. I hope you enjoy what you're about to see because we've got lots of acquisitions today. Um, and welcome back to any returning viewers. Thanks so much for subscribing. Thank you for coming back and hanging out with me and chatting with me about projects and yarn and things. So this is a Little Bean and Me podcast. My name is Kayleen. I am the principal fiber artist and dyer behind Little Bean Crochet on Etsy uh, and Little Bean Loves Hand Painted Yarn. My information is littlebeancrochet.etsy.com and I'll put the information down here. Um, and I'm on Instagram most actively as Little Bean Crochet and on Ravelry as KM Weaver. I'm moderately active on Ravelry. Um, we have a group, if you don't know, the Little Bean and Me podcast group, which there's a link in the description box below and as always you can find the show notes below I always add them when I'm uploading the videos so that you have all the information you need straight away whether it's for channels or patterns or dyers or whatever I'm talking about um, it will be below so if you're ready I'm ready so let's get into this um, I apologize for noise. If you hear noise, I have the windows open because it's finally fall. It's sweater weather. Yes, sweater weather, sweater weather. Uh, so the windows are open. It is a beautiful day. Um, sunny, finally, great walking. Uh, I've been out walking with kids around town f like almost every single day this week, which has been great. Walk to the post office, walk back, walk to the cafe, walk to the playground. We've just been walking everywhere. Um, if you hear any sounds from this direction, Tucker's just gone up for his nap. It's about 11.30, and um, who knows if he'll nap really well, if I'm going to have to have someone come here so I can go pick up Cecilia from preschool. I don't know. So let's get into stuff. Let's start with some community stuff. Um, I haven't talked a lot about community stuff on the podcast. Again, cars. Sorry about that. Um... But I made some really cool connections with folks uh, from different podcasts and also uh, just around town, which is really interesting. So as some of you may know, I do teach crochet down at my local yarn shop and it's here in Marblehead, Marblehead Knits. I can put a link below, um, <clears throat> which is great and allows me to meet a lot of new people, new knitters. And I actually met someone who's, I think her neighbor is the owner of Pearl Soho, which was really cool. I was like, oh my gosh, oh, that's really small world. You meet crazy people. Um, but a couple of weeks ago, I had a shop update and it was for the pumpkin spice latte sets, the first round of the pumpkin spice latte sets. And Candy over at the Pause for Stitches podcast, hey Candy, um, she had posted on Instagram that she wanted one of these sets and she was stocking my shop and she just purchased one. And she tagged another podcaster, um, Lisa from Saratoga Knitting, or Knitting by the Sea. She, um, she's a podcaster and she lives in Marblehead, literally around the corner from me. So we had a really interesting encounter. Uh, she ordered some yarn for me. I said, hey, you know, I'll just drop it off to you. Don't don't pay shipping. I'll just bring it to your door. I'll drop it in your mailbox, whatever. She said, hey, let's meet for coffee. So we met at a coffee shop and um, I brought Cece with me <laughs> because Cece goes everywhere with me. And it was really fun to chat with her. It was kind of surreal. You know, you watch folks who are online and then you feel like you get to know them really well. And then you meet them in person and it's almost, almost really strange. Even though you feel like you know each other, you don't know each other in a strange way. So I thought that was really cool. She's so sweet. So nice. She gave me a little pin. Where's my pin? Where's my pin? I moved to the bag. I took the pin off. Um, but she gave me one of her little podcast pins, which is so cute. And um, so it was really fun to meet her. I also have made some nice connections <clears throat> with um, Joanna over at the um, Stitching the High Notes podcast. We've been chatting. I donated some prizes to her knit along, the pumpkin along. So if you haven't followed her or checked that out, you should go check out her Ravelry group. But we were chatting for a while. Lynn over at Sunshine and Bubblegum, we've been chatting over Instagram, which has been great, and we're doing a little prize swap uh, for our respective podcasts, but her kids are right around the same age as my kids, so we chat a lot. Um, Clarissa Beth over at the Crochet Cakes podcast, I mentioned her podcast, sorry, I keep looking, 
over there. Um, <clears throat> I mentioned her podcast last week and she sent me a lovely little gift in the mail. A little, uh, I'll put a picture if I remember, but it's just um, a package of coffee from Puerto Rico, which is really, really awesome. So I'm very stoked to get into that. Uh, so it's just amazing the connections that you make with other people um, and I'm so happy to interact with all of you everybody who leaves comments down below whether it's on Ravelry or on Facebook or if you message me on Instagram or tag me on Instagram I'm so happy to see the projects you're working on whether it's with my yarn or not um, <clears throat> you know happy to hear what you have to say about certain things I got some awesome tips uh, on my last video about spinning and um, I was really happy about that. So I think it was Warm Juniper Knit. She she left a comment on my video. So I, it was just, it's been a really cool few weeks. You know, I've been doing this now for a few months and I do once a week. And it's just amazing the whole, the whole network that you come to interact with, whether you're just a viewer or you're a podcaster or a YouTuber in general or a dyer or a maker of some kind. Um, you know, it's, it's really awesome. So if you are not subscribed and you'd like to be subscribed, make sure you hit subscribe down below. Leave me a comment. I'd love to hear from you about what you like to do. Are you a knitter, a spinner, a weaver, a dyer? Um, you know, let's interact. Let's chat. Uh, I, I love reading your comments. So thank you for watching. So that's as far as community. The next part that I wanted to talk about was my works in progress. I don't have any finished objects. Big surprise. I never have finished objects. Oh my gosh. My son threw his blanket out of his crib again. This is the third time in a row. Three times in a row that he's done that. So I'm going to go take care of him and I'll be right I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, so I, I don't have any works in progress this week. Big surprise. I have two kids and we're constantly busy and I'm constantly dying and doing other things so I often start a lot of projects and then as they get finished they kind of trickle trickle down and knitting takes me much longer than crochet so all the projects that I started for knitting or things that I'm exploring um, either end up getting frogged because I don't like how it's coming out or they just kind of they languish a little bit because I only have 10 minutes here, 10 minutes there to work on stuff. So um, <clears throat> that's kind of how it goes. But I, I'm happy to show you what I have here. I had someone, I think it was Caroline, um, ask me about the Rose City Roller socks, which are going to be frogged. So I'm going to show you here. Um, so I, I had knit some more. You know, it's hard to tell how much I've knit on these, but because I didn't put a progress keeper, but I was somewhere up here. I'd knit maybe seven or eight more rows of a stockinette. Car, cars, sorry. Sweater weather, gotta open the windows. Um, so, you know, I finished the heel, but this sock is freaking enormous. Like it is enormous and it's uncomfortably large. So pardon my feet. If you don't like this, look away, but I'm going to show you how the sock fits because it is enormous. I have so much room in here. There is absolutely zero negative ease. There's actually positive ease in this sock. So that's the reason why I'm going to frog this. Um, I might just keep it, <laughs> you know, take it off the needles and just kind of keep it as a memento that this was the first sock I ever cast on. But I am so unhappy with the fit and it's part of, that's part of the reason why I put this thing in timeout because I wasn't liking, I like how it looks, I like the colors, um, but I am not liking the fit at all. Like it is so baggy and I'm a person who likes really snug socks, like snug ankle socks and I thought, oh, this would be perfect. But I think either I cast on too many stitches, I can't remember, I think I cast on 64 stitches or I'm using too large of a needle. These are, US size ones or 2.25 so these shouldn't be too large <clears throat> so I'm thinking I should have done the smallest size and I can't remember exactly how many stitches are supposed to be on this but these are the Rose City Rollers this is in my colorway Lighthouse Sunset which I really like they're nice and bright and um, oh my gosh. I think I'm going to die like 
He threw his blanket outside the crib again, and I feel like he's doing this on purpose. <laughs> just to drive me crazy. But um, I'm just very unhappy with the fit of these socks. So before I invest any more yarn or time, I mean, these don't take that much yarn. I think I'm just going to frog it, cut it, and then start again. Because I don't want to... See, I have tons of yarn left. I have the whole skein pretty much. I don't want to keep investing time in these because I just don't like it. I have holes here where I picked up stitches, where I was learning to pick up stitches. It's hard to see, but you can see my thumb. Um, <clears throat> and then my slip slip knits. I did, I didn't do it through the back loop, so I have this weird ridge dial over my hands. It's a busy morning. Um, so, so yeah, that's what's happened with these. I'm not happy with them. They've sat in time out for too long and I'm just done. I don't want to look at them. I don't want to, I don't want to wear this set of socks because they're too big. So actually it's just one sock, not even a half sock, but I'm done with that. So that's one work in progress. Now I'm going to go put the blanket back in my son's crib and then I'm going to come back here and talk to you about the rest of my works in progress. Okay. Okay. Getting up and down, it's not very fun from the floor. Uh, it's much easier off of the dining chair, but I like this filming sit up better. Okay, so works in progress. Rose City Rollers are getting frogged. I'm gonna try them again. I think I'm gonna do them two at a time and I'm going to do a smaller size. I don't like the size that it is, it's too large for my feet. I don't have particularly small feet, but for some reason these socks are just enormous, so I don't know. Um, Next work in progress is in this bag, which is a nice acquisition, which I'll get to in a minute. Uh, so this is also housing by Ho, my mitt, my one mitt that <clears throat> was done. But this is a new cast on. I cast this on last Saturday, I believe. This is the Coastline Shawl. It is a paid for pattern on Ravelry. Sorry about the clanking. This is done in my Mrs. Hudson colorway. And then this is a new base that I'm gonna talk about that I wanted to work with. This is a Superwash Merino Yak Nylon Fingering Weight base. Uh, so this is a semi-circular shawl, kind of like a crescent. Let's see, it's hard to show. Yeah, shawls are hard to show on the needles. So it's worked from the top of the shawl down to the bottom. You can see that's a pretty good representation. Uh, and it has lovely lace detailing, so it has garter panels, lace detailing, increases and decreases to create the rippling effect. It's actually quite a relaxing stitch. Yanina, Yanina Kalio, I think that's the designer. Um, <clears throat> it's a very well-written pattern. It's a very relaxing stitch. I'm starting to hit the wall here where I have, you know, over 200 stitches off the needles, but it's just trucking along. I wanted to cast on a shawl because I like scarves and such, but I didn't want to make something. I wanted to use some of the yarn that I have and I wanted to stitch up that yak yarn, which I'm really, really liking. Um, it's so soft. It's incredibly soft and I like the color. Of, this is just bare yarn and it has a nice spring to it the garter stitch has a nice spring so I'm really liking that a lot very squishy soft springy this is in my new Mrs. Brown's bags uh, if you guys don't watch the grocery girls you totally should um, this I waited two weeks to get uh, I ordered and shipping is kind of slow from Canada to me so uh, this is the yarn splat medium size bag I'll talk more about this in a moment. The next work in progress that I have is a new cast on. Again, knit. And this is my first attempt. So that was, the Rose City Rollers were my first socks that I ever cast on. Don't like the fit. So I made a shop update for Jinx Yarns. Um, I think this was right after she got back from DFW or Stitches. But she did some self-striping and she had it up. So I grabbed two skeins, one in sport weight for me and one in fingering weight for my husband. He has started knitting, so I wanted to get him a special yarn, which I'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but this is the Misery Business colorway on her st strong sport 
This is Strong Sport. So it's a merino base. It is four colors, so it goes from pink to black to this lovely orange color back to black or charcoal kind of gray tonal. I'm liking it. It was a little bit of a struggle bus to begin because I didn't want to do one sock at a time because I'm a notorious one and done person where I'll finish one thing and I'll be like, I don't feel like casting on the next one. Um, so I'm doing two at a time. I'm just kind of doing a vanilla sock. This I cast on 44 stitches on US size twos. I have plenty of stretch here. I want them tight, snug and tight. I have plenty of stretch, so I'm pr pretty sure that these are gonna fit well. Um, <clears throat> but these are on my Carbons fixed circulars, two at a time, Mina Phillips style. If you haven't seen Mina's two at a time sock tutorial, you should definitely watch it. It was very, very helpful. I found it most helpful because I was trying to cast on and use both, like cast on both ribbed sections at the same time and work them at the same time for the first few rounds and I found it to be almost impossible. Only because everything's so wibbly and if you've never done it before I guess it, you know, it can be a little confusing where the strands of yarn should be going. So what I did was I bought another set of needles. <laughs> cast on those needles, did some ribbing, cast on a second set of needles, did some ribbing, and then transferred it all to one set. So this is what I have so far. I have a mustache and a, a goatee. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm enjoying that. This is just one by one rib. I'm gonna do, I think this next round, I'm gonna start this tuckinette for the leg, and they're gonna be ankle socks because I really like ankle socks. So that's my next work in progress. And then my last work in progress is spinning. This is a new um, acquisition for me. I got some Rolex, which are very interesting to spin from. Um, I've never spun from them before. And I'm pretty sure this is mostly Merino. There's some Angelina in here. I don't know what else is in here. I can't remember. But I ordered it from Vattersfelt Farm. And it's so pretty look at that I love it it's called fall festival so um, we can just go into the acquisitions what a show I don't know if I'm the only one who thinks that every time I talk about acquisitions I think of that sketch for the Inquisition the Spanish Inquisition what's that movie it's the life of Brian the Inquisition here we go we know you're wishing that we go away <laughs> so I have some acquisitions that I've just pulled off the couch so I got some Rolex from Battersfield Farm. This is their fall festival color combination. Um, I think it's like nine different colors in here, but it's all fall colors. She also sent me some bonus Rolex, which I'm not sure the fiber content of these. I have to ask her, um, but she sent me a few Rolex, which I might keep these for giveaway prizes um, because I'm pretty slow at spinning right now. So. I'm not sure how fast I'm going to run through four ounces of Fall Festival and then, um, you know, go into those mystery fibers. But that was the first acquisition I had. I placed an order for that a few weeks ago. Um, got lost in the shuffle a little bit, but Amanda was awesome. You know, she got my stuff out to me right away. I was like, yeah, didn't I order something or I was going to order something? She's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe it. So those got to me last week. Also, these got to me last week. These are from the Classy Squid Fiber Company. She's also local to me. She's in Massachusetts. Um, but she does fiber. So this is her colorway Australis, which is Polworth, Falkland, and so cool. Um, I also got it because it was Polworth and Falkland, and I've never spun with those before, so I'm interested to try. And I also liked how it was a gradient. <clears throat> so we'll see how I do it. I'm not sure if I'll just spin a little on each one. And like grade out to it like this or do each one individually I haven't decided but um, I think this is two ounces two ounces I got this then I mentioned my jinx yarn so if you don't know Laura of jinx Laura of jinx yarns is the she's the dyer behind this brand she's also on YouTube uh, she has a podcast called the dyers notebook awesome podcast. If you've never watched it, you should go watch it. Um, she and I are very similar in our tastes for things, whether it's video games or, you know, just cosplay, things like that. So, 
Um, I really enjoy watching her and watching her talk about like day-to-day -day life or like things she's working on for cosplay. But I got this. This is for Tyler. This is the Rapture colorway, which is inspired by Bioshock, which is one of my favorite games. I really like this game, so does Tyler. But it's a nice uh, bright green, brown, variegated brown, dark green. Stripes are seven rows of brown variegated, neon green, dark blue, brown variegated, neon green, dark green, neon yellow, dark green. So it's like five different colors in here, which is pretty awesome. This is on her strong, no, this is her power sock base, which is a BFL. So this is 75% BFL, super wash, and I, I still do that. I should do this trick. Sheena showed this trick. I like that trick. Um... 75% Superwash BFL and 25% Nylon, which is 464 yards. Um, I had never worked with cell striping before, and I really wanted to try some of her yarn, so I was very happy to have gotten a couple colors that I wanted. Um, <clears throat> I'm not even going to attempt to get any Christmas colors because her shop updates are at the same time as bedtime for my kids, so <laughs> the chances that I'll actually get a Christmas color are pretty slim but I was very happy to get this. So um, I got this for Tyler. Tyler's been knitting and I, I thought maybe he would want to try some socks. So I wanted to get him self-striping because it's a little motivation. You know, each stripe, you, you I'm going to work on one stripe, then the next stripe, then the next stripe, and it's easy to measure. You can get them to match. So I feel like he would like that a lot. And then the last acquisition I got, I got a couple days ago, Miss Jamie over at the Strings and More podcast. She is known as Leslie Jean Knits on social media. She just opened her own Etsy shop with her own hand dyed yarn. Um, <clears throat> she says she's a hobby dyer, but she has skill. Uh, this is very well saturated. She dyes with food dyes. So I thought that was very interesting and I wanted to try one of her bases. Um, this is 100% Superwash Merino. It's her Smith Worsted Weight base. So she sent this to me. It came with a little progress keeper here and I guess I was her first customer so I was very pleased to see a surprise bonus of a few stitch markers in there and, um like one of these like knit stitch markers so um thank you very much Jamie uh, I really like this color when I saw it she showed this on I believe she showed this on her podcast but regardless when I saw it in the shop I'm like I need to have this and I need to have it on worsted weight so uh or DK whatever she had and she happened to have worsted so that is what I got. It's called Spectrum is the color and it almost re it reminds me of like a tropical parrot. Like some kind of tropical bird. A bird of paradise if you will. So um, I'm not sure what this is going to be. I feel like this is going to be a hat even though I'm not very fond of hats. Maybe a headband. I have this and then the wool that I purchased from Lola of Third Vault Yarns which is a similar teal color and I thought maybe I could do something with the two of them together and do some color work. But yeah, I'm very happy with this. So those are all of my acquisitions. It's a lot this week. I also may have placed an order with Gabby over at Once Upon a Corgi for a couple of skeins of her fingering weight yarn. Guilty. So those will probably see next week. So, oh, and then the acquisition I had for bags was this bag that came it's funny because I have bags that are similar in size, like this used so-and-so bag is very similar in size as far as volume, like what it's able to hold. Like these are both medium sized bags. This one is longer, this one is taller, but for some reason this one feels so much bigger, even though it's not. I think it has something to do with how wide the top opens on these. Um, I'm able to fit two skeins of yarn and my shawl in here very comfortably with notions and the pattern and still have a little bit of squish. Um, but I think it's the bottom. The bottom is extremely wide. So if you've never ordered a Mrs. Brown's bag, um, you'll probably be surprised by the quality. One, it's very high quality and two, the space, how she constructs her bag makes for a very roomy interior. It also has a slight, um, outward like trapezoidal I guess shape but it's very slight it doesn't it's not super out so I think that's another reason why it feels so open because this one kind of goes in see it's just it's the little opposite of the other one 
but they both have the same amount of volume. This one feels smaller, but it's not. Same high quality, just interesting how the shape makes a difference for that. Um, so yeah, I didn't solicit for any questions this week. I wanted to keep it as short as possible because I don't feel like editing a bunch of things. But at the beginning of the podcast, I put a little compilation of some of the dyeing I was doing today. I had um, a customer order eight skeins of the Elder Tree colorway, which is a pretty complicated colorway. <laughs> it has one, one, two, three, four, five, six, six colors in it. And it goes in and out of the dye bath, I think, four times with different treatments <laughs> each time. So um, it was it's a pretty labor-intensive color, but it's really fun. And it gives a fun final effect. It looks a lot like a tree, and it has all these nice brown and browns and greens. Um, it's a pretty masculine color, and I really like it a lot. So <clears throat> if you wanted to re-watch that, you can always rewind back to the beginning of the podcast. But... Um, but yeah, I thought I'd give you a little sneak peek into the stuff. I didn't wear gloves today because I'm out of gloves. So you can see I got stuff on my hands. I wasn't handling food or anything like that. So I always make sure to clean and wash my hands very well. But your fingers end up stained if you touch the dye. Um, obviously, I had a mask on, so safety first, everybody. But if you don't wear gloves when you dye, you end up with a big mess on your hands. So that was the dye work that I did today. Um... Then the dye work that I was doing this week, you see here behind me, which I will grab. Oh, I didn't make it, no! <clears throat> so the dye work that I did this week was the rainbow set. So I ordered, look at that, oh, I'm dying, it looks so awesome. So I ordered up this is the yak base. This is like, okay. So before I received this, I don't think I would have ever thought to dye yak or I'd, I wasn't sure if I was going to like how it felt or, you know, worked up. I'm, I'm so particular and it's hard to tell, you know, the companies when you do wholesale and you get a lot of yarn in, they send you little samples. I don't know how many yards are in those samples. Oh my God fiber nose um but it's hard to tell how something is going to feel just from this tiny little sample you know you rub it and you kind of like feel and see if you like it so I said you know what I'm just going to jump in because I like the color and I like how it dies up because I've seen other people dye this base or a similar base and I really like it so this is the bare wool it's uh 70 percent superwash merino 20% yak, 10% nylon. So it is soft. It's very springy. It has a nice uh, feel in the hands and it's very soft to wear. Um, it wouldn't, I'm, I'm super sensitive, so it wouldn't irritate me. <clears throat> but they, I get them in hanks already, 100 gram hanks. That's how I dye my yarn. So this is a full 100 grams. And then I decided that I wanted to do kind of a rainbow set because I like rainbows. And um, I haven't really done any rainbows yet. I want to do a rainbow gradient, which will be really fun. But there are so many folks that do rainbows. But I love the way that this yarn takes the dye. It gives these beautiful jewel tones. So this is primary red. If I dyed this on white yarn, it is bright. It is as bright as this. This is the red that's in here. you see how bright this red is? It is vibrant red. And this is what it looks like dyed up on the, the gray base, which is really cool. Um, this is primary yellow, primary color yellow. So they come out this lovely antique kind of tone. This is um, apple green. So very vibrant, bright green. This is peacock. And then this is plum. So all of these colors, if I dyed them on white, would be like, whew, like very, very, very bright, very rich and saturated. They come out very rich and saturated here, but they are much more muted. So what I'm doing, I haven't split these yet. <clears throat> these are all still in the set, but I'm going to do kind of a shawl kit or shawl set. It's enough to make a shawl. 
I guess, of your own choosing. I was really inspired for The Love of Rainbows by Mina Phillip. Um, she does it with a single 100 gram gradient, but what I'm going to do is divide these into quarter skeins. So you'll get a quarter skein of each color and a full 100 gram skein of the gray so that you can make your own rainbow shawl and distribute the color how you would see fit. So oh, it's just gorgeous, just gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> and you can mix and match to whatever yarns you already have in your own stash because these are just primary basic like look at that combo I kind of like that combo um, but you'll have enough to do a couple pairs of socks if you want a shawl if you want so that's gonna go up in the shop up update tomorrow but that was really fun to dye so shop update stuff uh, that's pretty much all that I dyed this week for shop update because I have a fully stocked shop um, it's been a little Kind of like swimming along, I get um, general orders, you know, for stuff that's in stock, but it, it wasn't a mad rush out the door, because I think a lot of people who wanted the um, pumpkin spice got pumpkin spice. So I have a lot of pumpkin spice left, I have a couple TARDIS skeins left, I have a couple of TARDIS um, gift sets left, and then I have this rainbow set left, and I think I have a couple more in the shop. Uh, ready to ship. So what's going to happen tomorrow? This is in the United States. It's a holiday. It's Columbus Day weekend So what's going to happen is I am going to move a bunch of yarns to the clearance section of my shop Discount them. So if you have a color that you like that you that's already in the shop You might want to wait till this weekend to order Wait till tomorrow at 1 but I'm gonna move a bunch of stuff into the clearance section to clear out and these rainbow sets will be in there um, under the a yak, the yak sock section. So if you want that, then go to the yak sock section. Um, I could dye something similar in merino. I would just have to over dye everything with gray, which is fine, but it's a bit more work. If somebody wants a set like that in just merino fingering weight or DK weight or whatever, I can do that. But um, for now, it'll be in the yak base. I think that's it for this week. It's finally beautiful outside. I cannot wait to go out and get Cecilia. Oh, Tucker's tapping. Yes. yes. Um, yeah, I can't wait to go. I think I might go and walk to pick her up, stop at the post office, drop packages off to be delivered for customers, and then walk back with them. I think that would be really fun this afternoon, provided Tucker is awake and I don't have to call in emergency help to get him. Yeah, we're all, I don't know if you can tell, we're all still recovering from this cold that we had last week and the week before. I feel like it's just lingered. I don't know <laughs> any other parents out there, families, people who have just been sick for the last few weeks. It's been a nightmare and all of my neighbors are sick and their kids are sick and the kids at school are sick and so we're sick. <laughs> uh, it's just really annoying. And there's an airplane outside right now. don't have anything else. I hope you have a lovely weekend and I will see you guys in my next uh, podcast next week, next Friday. Bye!